Now, it's been called the worst flooding in 100 years. It's led to at least 70 deaths and flooding in two-thirds of Iran. And it's set to get worse. Heavy rain since mid-March has flooded at least 24 of Iran's 31 provinces. Golestan province in the north bore the initial brunt of the flooding. Subsequently, it spread to other provinces, including Loristan, Fars and Khuzestan in the southwest. Khuzestan, in fact, has three major rivers that flow through it, and the continued threat of flooding has led authorities to order the evacuation of six cities along the Karkhe River. Unprecedented scenes for a normally arid region. Khuzestan in southwest Iran is one of the latest provinces facing mass evacuations, as fresh downpours raise fears here about new flooding. Further north in the Loristan province, extreme floods engulfed cities and submerged homes. The water was up to here. There's the mark. Some locals aren't waiting for help. They've started repairs, wishing to return to normal life as soon as possible. Just provide us with cement and equipment so we can do the work faster. Relief efforts are stalled. Aid agencies say the U.S. is partly to blame. According to the Iranian Red Crescent, Washington's sanctions on Tehran have blocked any foreign financial aid to enter the country. On its state TV, Iran's president said last week that it was a, quote, disgrace. In spite of what the Americans wished for, everyone will see that our big nation, our officials and our armed forces, working together, will reconstruct the ruins. Heavy rains since March have inundated almost 2,000 communities, causing damages worth hundreds of millions of euros. With the downpours showing no signs of easing, many Iranians are bracing for the worst. We heard there the claims that U.S. sanctions are hampering relief efforts to flood victims. Now, last week, Iran's foreign minister, Javad Zarif, accused his American counterpart, Mike Pompeo, of fake news for saying the U.S. was, quote, ready to assist through the International Red Cross. Zarif tweeted, as the ICRC president noted, the Iranian Red Crescent can't receive any funds due to illegal U.S. sanctions. U.S. should own up to its economic terrorism. The Red Cross has denied making those remarks. Now, Kaveh Madani, former deputy head of Iran's Department of Environment, says the world is ignoring the disaster. He tweets, the level of international attention to Iran's unprecedented floods is surprisingly low. People of Iran are in need of help and attention, regardless of international politics. Let us get more from Tehran. Joining us now is Amir Havasi. He's AFP's Tehran correspondent. Amir, good to see you. What is the situation in Iran right now? Hello, and thank you for having me. The situation in Iran right now, I can say, is that, well, the flood has reached the southwestern uh, part of Iran. Uh, there are the uh, rescue operations going on. And Khuzestan has basically been declared uh, in, to be in a, a state of crisis right now. And uh, it's mostly because the nearby river of Kakhe has uh, flooded and apparently is uh, going toward the city and threatening Ahwaz city, the capital of Khuzestan, which is home to about more than a million and a half of people. Now, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif has accused uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, and said that the sanctions imposed by the United States are harming and hindering relief and rescue operations. What are you seeing on the ground? Well, uh, I would say that the sanctions indeed are harming uh, the efforts. Well, it basically is that, well, uh, first of all, it does depend on who you're asking from. If you ask the U.S. State Department, they're going to say that humanitarian aid is not sanctioned. And that is true on its own in theory. But uh, since banking transactions are basically impossible, there's no, no aid can possibly come in. Iranian Red Crescent has recently claimed that uh, no foreign aid, no financial foreign aid so far has been received ever since the flood started in the uh, middle of March. And that is basically because uh, sanctions. Whatever Iran has got so far uh, seems to be only equipment. 
and uh, well, it's very small at that amount too. And the cash, which is badly, badly needed, has not come in yet. It seems like the only uh, transaction channel right now uh, is the uh, German Red Cross, and uh, seemingly our donations are supposed to go to them so it can get to Iran. But that still is not definite. So uh, sanctions have hurt Iran during this time, I would say that. But just the scale of this disaster, I mean, two-thirds of the country underwater, two-thirds of the country flooded. Um, is there an argument to say that the government potentially did not see this disaster coming? Well, I would say that the government failed to uh, prepare for this disaster. It's not just anticipating it. And uh, it, the burden falls equally on all sides. <laughs> Everyone in uh, control in Iran, I would say, because the situation we have with the deforestation, the situation we have with the numerous amount of dams, the situation we have with uh, unwarranted and unlicensed uh, constructions where the rivers used to be. Because uh, if you know, Iran has been in a time of drought for several years now. No one anticipated right. anything coming in. So uh, with that, people, we could say they got the um, illegal warrants and licenses to build uh, homes and uh, buildings along some where you, rivers used to be, which created a large right. number of this disasters that you see underground. So uh, with all that, we could, uh, Iran could have been definitely more prepared, but anticipating it, I wouldn't be so sure. Because uh, right. some of the images that have been pretty much seen are over at Shiraz, and that disaster happened in less than 10 minutes. Right. Thanks so much for that. Abit, we'll have to leave it there for the time being. Amir Havasiri here speaking to us from Tehran. Thank you so much.